that we can begin. Excellent. So we're here to celebrate the harvest um, and uh, it's great to see you all, great to be back here. I'm Chris Polkhill, I'm from the Reflection Gardens at Canterbury. Um, at the back of church there's a couple of my books for sale and some of this service and the, one of the readings we have are from Heart for Creation, one of the books. So, um, before we start, just a really big thank you to everyone who's made an effort to direct, uh, decorate the church because these are trying and testing times and we're having to do things differently all the time and uh, it looks beautiful. Well done. Great. And I'm sure it will be very much appreciated by uh, the food banks where I understand the food is going afterwards. So we turn to the beginning of the service booklet. Thank you God for your goodness and generosity that blesses us and the earth. Amen. Thank you God for the people who provide our food and those with whom we share our food. Amen. Thank you God for this place this church and for your faithful love over the years. Thank you God. God our creator, we come together to celebrate your creation, the bright beauty about us, the abundance of your providing. Accept this offering of praise as we worship you, the maker of all. Now we're going to have the first song that we can't sing, um, but will be sung for us by magic. However, you know, you have whole body, you can um, direct the music as it's going and uh, enter into taking your part in it that way.
So a collect for Harvest Sunday. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land and the riches of the sea and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we cherish and respect this planet and its peoples. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grains and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, you may have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared Whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Jesus then said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, and what you will eat, or about your body and what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, but they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet the God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do a small thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes, the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. How much more would he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat, and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nation of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Living God, please bless those words and thoughts which come from you, and forgive those which do not. What a relief. The harvest is in and we can all give thanks and praise to God, and a well done to all the farmers. The harvest is in and we will live this winter. Thanks be to God. Actually, the grain harvest was in by August, um, that's why we have Lammas Tide, and the first um, set of grain is made into the new loaf. Right now what we've got is a fruit and vegetable harvest, um, and all of us with gardens who've been growing things will uh, be very busy. And then the potatoes, if you've managed to keep your potatoes in the ground that long, which I don't. Um, in Lincolnshire, the school half term was when all the children shell out into the fields to help pick the potatoes by hand. 
Yeah, you know, we would have lived anyway. Because if our harvest had been bad, we are a rich enough country to buy food in from elsewhere in the world. And in fact, we do buy grain from other countries, um, even wheat, which is particularly good this year, as the, uh, it was so dry in May, they didn't get as much wheat as usual. And of course, for all those of you that eat rice, we don't actually grow rice at all in Britain. So, we will live the winter anyway. We've lost touch, really, with the immediacy of food growing and the human community living. With the need to ration out food as stores run low at the end of winter. Instead, we have a marvellous interconnected system of food production into a wide variety of foods that we find on our supermarket shelves. Thanks be to God for the amazing variety of foods and tastes that we can buy and enjoy. And we have large stores of food in warehouses as a nation, so we can enjoy the winter. We've lost touch with what it is like to depend on a good harvest this year, so will there will not be empty bellies and full coffins in winter. We have lost touch with the work of farmers who no longer need the local community to bring in the harvest as machines do the cutting and the threshing and the storm. To be disconnected from the land that nourishes us, it's not good for us, body or soul. However much modern methods make life easier, and they do. It's been interesting in these strange times, how much people have valued being in nature, noticing the birdsong and the cleaner air. Columbanus, a 6th century monk, he's one of my favourites, said in one of his sermons, and would you believe after 1400 years we still have nine of his? Um, I doubt you'll have any of mine in that world. He says in one of his sermons, understand the creation if you would wish to know the creator. For those who wish to know the great deep must first review the natural world. He reflects the Celtic Christian belief that the existence of God is confirmed through contemplation of the natural world. It's beautiful round here. We are very lucky. But if we look at the natural world with love and honesty, we have to admit that we humans have not just learned to get more food out of smaller spaces of ground than our ancestors ever did. Nor have we just pulled down barns and built bigger ones. We have taken over most of the land for our purposes and squeezed out the wild spaces and the creatures that live in them. Um, the, the transformation of life that echoes through the whole of resurrection. So we say, sorry, God forgives us. God is with us as we work to put right, to redeem uh, what has gone on. In the life of Jesus, we see this readiness of God to walk beside us whatever the cost and to show the enormous depths of God's love. The ancestors of this place, even 150 years ago, would have shared in the harvest. They'd have been out there, even down to the smallest child, working and labouring to get the harvest in. And then they would have shared in the harvest feast, and my goodness wouldn't it have meant them. It was a real celebration and a real thankfulness. Being thankful for our food keeps us in touch with where it comes from, who laboured to grow and produce it, how far it's travelled. And to be aware too of the many who don't sit down today to enough. And all we need to do 
to change that. Saying a grace before meals is something that not so many do these days. But at the least, it keeps you thankful for the food on your plate. Thanks be to God for the harvest is in. Thanks be to God for the beauty and the solace of the natural world. And I thank you, God, for being beside us as we review our care of creation, God's big book. You're invited to stand as we affirm our belief. We believe in one God who keeps his promise forever. Has he given victory and done wonderful things to save us? He has. Did he set the mountains in place by his strength and calm the roar of the seas? He, he did. Do his deeds bring shouts of joy from one end of the earth to the other? They, they do. do. Does he make the land rich and fertile? Does he fill the streams with water and provide the earth with crops? Does he send rain on the fields and soften the soil with showers? and make the young plants to grow? Does he fill the pastures with herds, cover the hills with sheep, and the valleys with golden wheat? He does. We, his people, shout and sing for joy. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray together now, so do sit or kneel as you're most accustomed to. Let us pray. In the prayers this morning, at the end of the sentence, which starts, walk beside us as the response will be, and free us from the guilt that binds us. Loving God is Jesus, who stepped up to the line, bit the bullet, only the problem. Walk beside us as we live with the evidence that earth is under threat. Under threat. Share our pain the way we have annoyed the truth and ignored the signs. And free us from the guilt that binds us. Loving God, in Jesus you laid yourself open, stuck your neck out, and made yourself vulnerable to the whims of earthly rulers. Walk beside us as we risk the consequences of challenge. Share our pain what has been done to selfishness and blindness and free us yes, from the guilt that binds us. Loving God, in Jesus you grasped the netter, picked up the shovel, became involved. Walk beside us as we speak for the earth and struggle with change. Share our pain, what has not been done, through fear and weakness. And free us from the guilt that binds us. Loving God, in Jesus you faced the music, carried the can, took the blame. Walk beside us as we own our human field. Share the pain for what has been done in foolish and ignorance. And free us from, from the guilt that, that binds us. Loving God in Jesus, we rolled up your sleeves and left from the front. We pray for Andy Simpson and as he prepares to become our vicar in December. Walk us 
sign up church for them and help us support them. Loving God, in Jesus you got stuck in, bore the brunt, paid the price. Walk beside us as we struggle with the consequences of the pandemic. Share our worry for our struggling world as our patience and tolerance leads us to put others at risk. Loving God, in Jesus you stepped up to the mark, put your head in the noose, walk beside us as we pray for all who are suffering, share our concern for all those who are sick, especially Margaret and Jill. Give them the loving care and support we can't provide. And free us from the guilt that binds us. Loving God in Jesus, you took the blame with the last one standing. Welcome all who have died in faith and who grieve, especially for Noreen Mullis and her family. And Maureen Rose, who died this week. We think of their families and friends. And also, the Rose England, who you remember at Tate and Hill today. Walk beside each of us when we come to our final hours. And free us, us from the guilt that, that binds us. us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. joy and peace. If we live by the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. you. And with not moving, because we can't. <laughs> Share the peace with those around you. Please be with you. Peace be with you. This is sign language for the peace of the Lord be with you. I love it because I, I've watched the deaf uh, community in the cathedral share the peace with people right down the other end without moving. And it's the peace of the Lord be with you. I think it's brilliant.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed be God forever. We invite you to stand for the Eucharistic prayer. The invitation doesn't mean you have to. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Lord of all, you created the universe, where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us your love even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. You made us all, each wonderfully different, to join with the angels and sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sanna in the highest. We thank you, loving Father, because when we turned away, you sent Jesus, your Son, who gave his life for us on the cross and shows us the way to live. Send your Holy Spirit, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us Christ's body and blood. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took the bread he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood, poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now, with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. And receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which He gave for you, and His blood, which I will take for all of us, which He shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and lives for you, and feed on Him in your hearts, 
by faith with thanksgiving. I understand the church wardens are directing who come up, who come up the centre and we return around to the um, side aisles. If you need gluten free bread, the priest wakes up if you do. We have celebrated harvest, brought our gifts, sung our hymns in our hearts, and thanked our God. As we go out into the world, may God help us to live our lives as people of the harvest, to share and to give, to bless and to love, through Christ Christ, our friend and Saviour. Amen. May God's joy be in our hearts. May God's peace be in our world. May God's love be known between us. And the blessing of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand for this hymn? Because, you know, it is a real good rallying hymn. Uh, come ye thankful people, come and sing it in your body and your heart.
everybody and, and thank you so much for coming to celebrate a harvest festival. And thank you ladies for all the beautiful decorations on the windows. And we've got a lot of uh, dry goods to take to the food bank. So thank you. And also thank you to our, our congregation who are sitting at home, anywhere in the world, watching this service. Welcome. But also to our DVD congregation, who each week receive a DVD of this service. So welcome to them as well. Our service next week is a video service led by uh, the Archdeacon, soon to become the Bishop of Stafford. Now, as David said last week, we do collect bishops <laughs> from our services like children used to collect stamps. We collect bishops. So that's our service next week. Uh, we hope that uh, the news of our of perhaps further restrictions which may be announced tomorrow may not upset our worship. It is great that we can all be here. But particular thanks to Chris. Thank you so much. And to Duncan. Isn't it great to have all the music? Mm -hmm. So, thank you all. Be strong. Be safe. And God bless. And my addition to that is um, within what we can do, live to the full. Jesus has abundant life. And it can't uh, just be for when life is great and good. It's in all times. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.